This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, my friends, we are uh, out at Nakomi this Sunday. This is our Nakomi Sunday. Um, and so many of us have gathered out there. Please, please, we, we ask you to keep continuing to send your prayers to God to keep us dry uh, and that we are enjoying our day uh, before the rains may come. Uh, my friends, it is um, indeed a joyful day to be gathered as, as God's people with God's people in the presence of the living God. We gather together as one church in two different places. We gather as one church in wherever we may be, um, whether you are at home or we are together at Nakomi, we are one church and we are grateful and rejoice in our spirit together and being joined with God's spirit among us. Uh, I want to go ahead and remind you that this day too is the day of our congregational meeting when we will be uh, voting on our new elders, our new ruling elders and deacons out at Nakomi. Uh, we will we publish those names in our uh, newsletter this past month. Uh, the new July newsletter will be going out um, soon, and we will give you more information about uh, the things that we will be doing in July, and even into August, what some of the plans will be then. Um, we are continuously reassessing the situation and the state of our country when it comes to the coronavirus, so we will keep you informed if there are any changes um, to be made. We are considering right now because July 4th weekend is on a Saturday, so the 5th of July is the next Sunday that we would gather together as God's people uh, in our worship uh, and in our sanctuary for worship. Uh, so my friends, we are, we are possibly thinking about only having one service that, that day, and we would do it at 1030 when we would normally do our worship service. I need to gather our session together so that we can make that decision to uh, only have one service that weekend. I think it could be wise. I'm sure that many people will uh, be spending some time away as things are beginning to open up and it is a holiday weekend. People may be wanting to get away with their families or uh, just spend some time um, out at the river or doing things uh, outdoors. Um, so that is the plan. I will get you uh, more of that confirmation and information very soon. When we have that, um, we will get back to you. We are also still collecting cereal. Uh, we will be collecting cereal throughout the month of July as well. So please, if you are um, able to help us and help uh, in helping the Family Center, please bring a box of cereal or two uh, by the church office whenever it is convenient for you. And uh, you can place them in the bins uh, so that we can get those, those important resources to the families that need them uh, here in our community. The psalmist said, the earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and all who live in it. So let us continue in our worship this day. And I invite you to begin your worship wherever you may be through these virtual means by starting with a prayer. This prayer is the same prayer that I will be praying with everyone at Nakomi. It is a prayer that indeed confesses our nature uh, and being in nature and giving our whole selves to God. So let us pray together. God of all children, God of all life, God of every nation, God of creation and of every creature great and small, God of all flesh. We make our confession to you on this day that you have made us to be blessed and to be a blessing, to be your people and to live in the image of your love in the world. And in this prayer, we recognize all the ways we sense your nearness and grace. We confess with open hands that we come to you with nothing but ourselves, with open hearts and open minds, opening our lives, longing to be filled by your spirit. We confess to you through the smells of morning and the fragrance of fresh air. And as the budding flowers begin to bloom, they are a refreshing reminder that you 
are in the room. You linger in the spaces surrounding us and you capture us by the bouquet of your newness. May every breath we breathe be from you and be a redolence of your weary, for our weary souls. We confess to you by hearing the birds awaken us to their early song, listening to the steady cadence of each noisy day, telling us that there is still work to be done. You sing to us the melodies of justice and the harmonies of hope. You make our song the actions of your peaceful lament, crying out with a still small voice, be still and know that I am God. We confess to you with the savory sweet foretastes of your promised new day, by the pleasing palates of prayer and the spicy subtleties of forgiveness. You invite us to taste and see the visible mysteries of your love being poured out for us. We confess to you that our visions have been blinded and that our dreams are not the ones you dream for us. So may our eyes be given the needed second touch of your mercy, that the scales of hatred and lies may fall away from our eyes and may they ever be replaced with new sight through the manifestation of your way, truth, and life. Through our Lord and Savior, your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, within whom we pray. Amen. Will you uh, join your hearts with mine as we begin for the prayer of illumination of God's Word? Let us pray together. Gracious God, we pray that you escort these ancient words of wisdom, well-traveled among your saints, to find us here today. And help us, Lord God, with the aid of these scriptures, to see with your light the truth that no darkness could ever chase away. And hold us fast to your love, which is an anchor, sure and steadfast given to us by your only Son, Jesus Christ. And all of God's children say, Amen. Our first scripture lesson this morning is from Psalm 13. Let us hear God's word for us this morning. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep the sleep of death and my enemy will say I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God. And then these three verses from Matthew's gospel, as we have been going through Matthew chapter 10 these last few weeks, and this is the summary of Matthew chapter 10. Jesus says to his disciples who he has been instructing quite a bit about the work of discipleship, the cost of discipleship. But here also the reward. Jesus says to his disciples, whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cold cup of water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, None of these will lose their reward. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
So we are out at Nakomi, a place that is very dear to the hearts of many in this congregation and to our, um, to our life together. And I am recalling a little of what it is like to be dropped off at sleepaway camp for the very first time. It can be a really wonderful and yet harrowing experience. Perhaps you recall that moment for yourself. That expression on your parents' faces that looks happier than it should look as they abandon you in a totally new place surrounded by strangers. The duffel bag you're carrying feel like it has bricks in it. Your backpack is bursting at the seams like you're never going to return home again. Our parents seem to have packed us more for survival and less for just a week away. We stand in a long line for registration, receive our cabin numbers and our group names. We meet our camp counselor and then pray we don't end up on the bottom bunk with no mattress. This is starting to feel more like we're being enlisted and less like something that we do for summer vacation. We get herded into an awkward welcoming orientation followed by a lunch that reminds us we will not be eating our mother's cooking in any time soon. And by the end of the day, we have probably met someone who will talk to us, but quickly that first day becomes that first night and lights out. You stare into the dark, too afraid to close your eyes. You pray for morning to come quickly. It comes earlier than you have ever expected. You get up, you eat breakfast before the sun comes up, and you sit down and write a letter to your parents saying, this is the worst place on earth. You should come here immediately and pick me up. That is probably not how everyone recalls their first time at sleepaway camp. But regardless, that first night can be a, a little rough. For me, I recall moments of indeed crying out, how long, oh Lord, how long? And no matter how welcoming and fun camp actually was that summer, or how much everyone tried to make me feel at home and comfortable, at first, it was hard to be receptive to it. Oh, I felt welcomed, but receiving it was a lot tougher. To be welcoming is very important in our faith journey. To have a practice of hospitality is a lesson that we are taught all throughout the Bible. I am reminded of Abraham sitting outside his tent under a tree feeding these three unknown visitors that he had. Or God reminding the Israelite people through Moses that they were once aliens in a foreign land and therefore you shall love the stranger as yourself. Or the widow who shared what little she had with the prophet Elijah, who in return restored her son to life. And indeed the apostle Paul who keeps on reminding the church that sometimes each and every one of us entertain angels without knowing it. Sharing in the spirit of hospitality is a holy practice. Working in the service of welcoming those who are unwelcomed is an act of embodying Christ's body in the world. And if I understand what I'm reading here, there is much more to this than just showing hospitality and welcoming others. This is also about how we are receptive to such things. There are many things that we as human beings are not always receptive to. One, we may believe we are welcoming to others, but we are not always great at receiving them. We are not always receptive to criticism or praise. Some of us do not like hearing compliments and often resist receiving them with gratitude. People are not always good at asking for help or for care 
or compassion. We struggle when we have to hold or respond to someone else's struggles or pain or grief. Some of, it, some of us find it impossible to receive the strength of another person when we are feeling weak and fragile ourselves. People are not completely truthful about listening to another person's truth or seeing them for who they really are or accepting them fully for the life they live or for loving who they love. Many of us often lack the courage to be vulnerable with each other. Some folks are just plain terrified to acknowledge how much it hurts to be afraid or to sit with someone who is feeling afraid. We don't welcome shame. We don't accept rejection. We don't appreciate name calling, none of which any person should have to receive from another person. But often people expect us to. And that it's just our job to let it roll off our backs. Most often, we are these people. And sometimes, they are the people we love who are having a hard time loving. And sometimes, they are the people we just keep letting into our heads and who are standing in our way. We are the ones who are welcoming. We're just making it harder to receive it. The one thing that all humans find hardest to receive is grace. And when it comes to grace, perhaps our real re reward is in receiving it. We are completely reminded that we are children of God and not God when we catch ourselves asking if we are even worthy of God's grace. And here's the shocking truth. If you haven't ever heard of it before, we are not worthy of it. Because that is not how grace works. So just take that idea off the table. When it comes to God's grace, most of us stay comfortable only testing the waters. As a professor of mine likes to say, just dipping our toes in it. When the reality is we're swimming in it. The one idea we cannot take off the table is that love and grace is poured out for us. The part we all struggle with is receiving it. The hardest part yet is not welcoming grace, but showing ourselves a little grace of our own. You see, our real reward is in receiving it. You see, what Jesus is talking about here, if I'm trusting how I'm reading the text, is that to practice the holy work of being more welcoming is to first be receptive to God's grace. Because the true reward is in receiving it. But then we are also asked to trust ourselves to be Christ's loving disciples and to show that grace to each other and to ourselves. We are all called to be Christ's body in the world, sure. But most of the time, we can do that all day long because we're no longer just testing the waters. We're swimming in it. You see, Jesus said to his disciples, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. That's grace. It's his refreshing as a cool cup of cold water. I want you to turn to a neighbor right now or text somebody and I want, to, I want you to say you're welcome. Or later today or later this week when you see someone, tell them I'm sending you grace and if they say thank you, you say you're welcome because that's how grace works. We remind each other that we're swimming in it. And maybe then, 
we'll be more receptive to it and we'll receive God's grace and we will receive grace from each other and we will show a little grace to ourselves. You're welcome. Don't mention it. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. God of all kindness, you gave your only Son because you love the world so much. We pray for the peace of the world. Move among us by your Spirit, break down barriers of fear, suspicion, and hatred. Heal the entire human family of its divisions and unite it in the bonds of justice and peace. We pray for our country enrich our common life, strengthen the forces of truth and goodness, teach us to share prosperity, that those whose lives are impoverished may pass from need and despair to dignity and joy. We pray for all who suffer. Surround them with your love. Support them by your strength. Console them with the hand of your comfort and give them hope and courage beyond themselves. We pray for our families, for those whom we love. Protect them at home. Support them in times of difficulty and anxiety that they may grow together in mutual love and understanding and rest content in one another. We pray for the church. Keep us true to your ways. Help us be responsive to the gifts and needs of all. Make known to us your saving power through Jesus Christ. By the weakness of our faith, our worship, and our life, we come to you needing amazing grace. And sustain those among us who need your healing touch. Make the sick whole, give hope to the dying, comfort those who mourn, uphold all who suffer in body or mind, not only those we know and love, but also those known only to you. 
that we may know the peace and joy of your supporting care. Dear God, we pray this through your wisdom and your mercy. And when the words fail us, we are reminded that you have given us words to pray. Praying together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, I want to remind you one thing. That you are not just dipping your toes in grace but you are swimming in it. And that's why it is so amazing. It's amazing because the reward is in receiving it. And the beauty is we get to share that reward with each other and to ourselves. So remember to show yourselves a little grace this week. Remember to say to someone, I'm sending you grace this week, because surely God is. And if someone says thank you, you say you're welcome. You're welcome. As you turn off your computer screens from this worship, or as you travel throughout your day today, leave nothing behind but carry in front of you the very gift of following Jesus Christ. And know that you are blessed and that you are to be a blessing to everyone you come in contact with. That, you are that we are both broken and beautiful people and that we are striving to live to God's promised new day. And whatever road you travel on or every door that you open, or every barrier that you cross through. Know that it is a threshold of grace in which you travel. And may God go where you go. And now the peace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, the Holy Spirit keep you, that you may live in faith and abound in hope and grow in love, both in this time and place and in every time and place. Go in peace, my friend. Let the service begin.